Another year, another crap January. Here is why, and it's very simple. Each year can be looked on a graph charting month and faith. Faith in this context isn't a hot vampire slayer. Instead, how much Hollywood believes this movie will profit. Spring is about breaking even, summer is for the big bucks, fall is for stuck-up artours begging on the corner and fishnet, and winter is for the acceptable losses companies probably wish could be tax write-offs. January specifically is the dump site for movies that probably should have been taken around back and put out of its misery. And the 355 is no different. So, Bucky Barnes and Jessica Chastain are agents for the CIA attempting to obtain a device that can hack any other electronic on the planet. After a botched handoff, Bucky dies 20 minutes in, so obviously not, and Jessica sets out to find the device for the CIA. Along the way, she forms a group of women with a collective BMI of two who I'm supposed to believe can throw men around like dirty dishes. How am I supposed to believe the group of women is capable of accomplishing what they do in this film? Excluding her solo film, which was an enema with Buffalo sauce, at least Black Widow was portrayed competently with a woman in actual shape. So while a regular human, she's in a comic book film and was backed by somewhat competent coordinators and camera work, albeit in the same setting I would still take issue with Scarlet in Chastain's place. But here, Chastain is what, 5'4 and... 120 pounds dripping wet? She isn't a badass who could fold a man like a chair. No, if she threw hands with any of these guys, she'd end up a hashtag trend. That's the problem. So much of this film isn't believable. Chastain is as much a believable action heroine as I am a warlock, and it doesn't help when the stuntmen stand there like a rock waiting to erode while she struggles to perform stunts. Not to mention every time someone throws a punch here, they have a lower accuracy than the MLB's batting average. That's just the action. This is such a color-by-number story, I wouldn't be surprised if the team behind this movie lived on a steady diet of crayons. Being the director of Dark Phoenix, the team probably dipped those crayons in glue as well. This movie even tries to convince me the Chinese government is good people. I would sooner believe that Satan was thrown out for no other more than depancing Gabriel. How about all the cliches? Big action star dies too early off-screen, so obviously he's probably the bad guy. Or character stands in the open air area with wide camera angle waiting to be attacked. Oh, also all the wasted characters like Penelope Cruz. She's literally paid to stand there and do nothing else except cower in the corner. Why did you need her? She's a psychologist, not an agent, and the whole seductive information extracting psychologist ploy should literally be what the rest of these women in the group can accomplish without her. Now, does the 355 prove that wokeness in film is dead? No, but it is dying. Even that target audience couldn't be convinced to see this, and the box office performance of this kind of film convinces me there is a light at the end of the tunnel. As for the 355 itself, it's really bad. Boring, bland, poorly written, unconvincing, and unsurprising like a Biden presidential campaign. Now, thanks for watching. Please like, share, ring the bell for notifications, and if you want to watch more movie reviews, then check out my review of the unnecessary Matrix Resurrections here. And check out my top five worst, boring, and best of 2021 at the link below. And I'll see you in the next video.